I'm super excited about today's project. We're gonna use the XOXO project panel. It's got great little throw pillows and even a zipper pouch. And I'm gonna talk you through some embellishments to bring it to the next level. All right, so this is our panel. As you can see, it is quite large and it has all kinds of fun things in it. Over here, these could be tiny little throw pillows or you can turn them into zipper pouches. This is a great little lumbar pillow you can see over here, which I think turned out so cute. And then it finishes off with four square pillows. And so I'm gonna use some chenille it as well to add some embellishment to that. I have both the 5 8 and the 3 8 of the white, and then the 5 8 of the pink, just to add some variety to our projects. I also brought a few of the different skews that coordinate with this panel. I just think they're so fun. To make the pillow backs, you're going to need a yard and a half, and that should make all of the pillows that you see here. And I just used a white for the backing of the quilting part itself, because that'll be inside of the project when it's all done. And so let me just set this to the side and I will show you how we're gonna embellish this first pillow. So I went ahead and rough cut around all of my shapes and now we actually need to square these up. It needs to measure 16 and a half. It's really close, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim that down. So let me just grab my longer ruler here to make it easier on myself. And I am just kind of centering this up and eyeballing. So I'm gonna shave a little bit off of both sides to keep my design centered. And so I will make this first cut just like so. And then I'm just gonna spin this and cut one side at a time. Okay, and so now I'm just checking again and this direction, and this might happen to you when, once you've quilted it, I like barely need to shave any. I'm actually like on this side slightly shy of that 16 and a half. I think I can make it work in my seam allowance, I'll just have to watch. But if that makes you uncomfortable, you could even shrink this down to 16 or 16 and a quarter. Um, just keep an eye out for that. So I'm just gonna shave off this bottom end here a little bit, just like so. And then we'll keep spinning, because I know this side needs to be trimmed just a tiny bit. There we go. Our last cut. And now it should be square and ready to go. So once I've done that, the next step is to add any of those chenille details that you want to add. And so for this one, I think I'm gonna outline this in the white and I'm actually going to layer both the 5 8 and the 3 8 because I think it'll give it lots of texture when we wash to have both of those layers there. So if you're not familiar with chenille it, it is a loose weave bias, like tape ribbon that you can manipulate and stretch and put onto your projects that works so well. And when you wash it, it just frays up. And so it's really simple to use. So I'm just gonna bring both of these rolls over to the machine next to me. And we are just going to lay this just like so. I'll lay the wider down first and the narrower on top. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball in the middle of that. And then I'm gonna stitch right down the center of that. And so we will do all of that under the machine, but I wanted to make sure you got an idea of what I was talking about here. So let's go ahead and take it over there. Okay, so now we're at the machine. I've gone ahead and lined up these two layers and you can notice this white outline that goes around the heart. I'm just centering this on that. This is super forgiving. So you don't need to panic if you are a little off of that line. When it washes, it's all just going to hide those imperfections and look so cute. So don't fret. So I am just gonna float these one on top of the other and my stopping place is gonna be at the point of this heart. So I'm gonna work my way around this curve and then I'll snip here and then we'll come back and finish the other half. So let's go ahead and do this. So I do like to back stitch at the beginning. And if you notice the way that this works out, the narrower tape is right between the clear opening of my presser foot, which makes it super easy to follow and make sure it's staying straight. So just take our time and cruise down. 
just reposition as you get closer to this curve. And you can see how easy this naturally will curve for you because of the bias. And so I will just start to make sure that it's where I want it and we'll just slow down around the curve. And just make sure it's staying lined up on top of one another. And now that I'm getting close to this stopping point, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this around and figure out where I want this to end. And I can grab my scissors right here and just snip that off because I know that will be the end of this first run. And then I'm going to back stitch again at the end there. And then we can cut our threads. So let's go ahead and look at this first half just because I want you guys to see how this turns out. So it's not perfect at all. There's even a little tuck right here and you just do not need to worry about it. It's so forgiving when you wash it and you'll notice even down here, I got slightly off center and I think adding these two layers, just makes it even more forgiving, right? Because we have both of them that are gonna balance each other out when they wash and fray. So I think this is perfect. I'm very confident that I'm gonna be happy with how this turns out. So now let's go do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, so I'm getting close to the end here and I do just have this overlapped, but I'm gonna show you at the very end, I found if you do a few little snips to kind of release that and help it fray at the end, you'll be happier with the result. So let's go ahead and stitch all the way to the end. And again, we're going to backstitch just a few there to lock it in and cut our threads. Okay. And so then I've got these little scissors. Let me just show you here. So you can see I've overlapped at the top. I'm just going to add a few little snips just to encourage it to fray where it's tight there on the inside doesn't take anything crazy. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here where they're overlapping. So just add a few extra snips across the top and in here. And I think that should do it. And then when you throw this in the washing machine and the dryer, be prepared for a little bit of fluff, but it will you know, fray up just like you see here on this one. And I think this turned out so cute. And it just adds such a fun detail that is really simple to work with. So now that we have our detail added, we can go ahead and work on the pillow backs. So all of the squares are made exactly the same way for the backs, and that is by cutting a 10 inch strip of your background fabric, and then subcutting that into a 10 by 16 and a half inch rectangle. And so I have that ready to go here. And ultimately, we just want to hem under one side. And so we're going to take this to the ironing board we're going to turn it under a quarter of an inch, then a half inch, and we'll top stitch. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And so once we have that done, now I can take this to the machine and I just want to top stitch this to hold that in place. And I find it easier to work from this bottom side so I can see and make sure I'm catching all of my layers. But I just make sure that this top edge stays lined up on one of the reference lines of my machine, usually it is right at the half inch. I find that my fold ends up a little wider, but if you're more accurate, you could go down to three eighths, whatever works for you. And then we are just going to stitch all the way across. There we go. Perfect. That looks beautiful. And so I have the other one complete. And so now 
we are just going to line this up over our square with right sides together so the pretty side of our fabric down and we will have one going each direction and then from here I like to use either some pins or some clips just to keep this from shifting so I'm going to grab some pins here and I always start at this overlap and I'm just going to put a pin there and one on the other side and then do the same thing for the top and bottom and the corners. I find that on these pillow backs like this, they just tend to shift on me and I have better luck if I actually take the time to pin. I know, surprise, surprise. Sometimes it's worth it. There we go. One more down here. And the last one. All right, now this is ready. We can take this to the machine and we are just gonna go all the way around this with a quarter inch seam and we will be done with our pillow. So I'm gonna start along this edge. I need to move my needle over a bit. There we go. Always take those pins out as you get close to them. I like to sew right off the edge and then bring this around and pivot. All right, this is all done. You can see how quick and easy this is. And so now all we have to do is turn this right sides out. So simple. We'll just poke those corners. I like to use my nails, but if you need a turning tool or something, you can use that to get them nice and sharp. Just like so. And look how cute that is. Isn't that so fun? So now that you have the back attached, I would, this is when I would wash it. I wouldn't wash it before you've attached your pillow backs and then it will fray up beautifully. You'll end up with these adorable pillows like you see here. And then you've got this full set for the holidays to decorate your whole living room. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.